Okay, um, we're on page 199 of section 3.6, the last section, and this is where we're attempting to regress data onto a exponential curve. It turns out there, it is possible to do under um, Google Sheets, and so we're going to now, uh, this example is a copy of the example that was under page 199 and it's average weekly earnings rounded to the nearest dollar for Canadians over a five-year period extending from 2002 to 2006. Um, the reason I'm rehashing this example, even though I'm sure you could read it for yourself, is because the example in the book uses a calculator that chances are you don't have. And the question then becomes, how do you do it under Google Sheets? So I'm going to show you how to do this under Google Sheets and how to figure out what exponential function you have uh, using Google Sheets. Google Sheets assumes that uh, the base uh, is something called E. Now E is called Euler's constant. So if we put this here, Euler's constant is given by exp1 and this is the same as saying e to the power one so anything to the power one is whatever the base is equal to so if you want to know what the base is equal to you can do this on your spreadsheet and that's the base of that uh, of whatever function that this google spreadsheet will do um it doesn't sound very tangible but for reasons involved with more advanced mathematics. Um, I guess the makers of Google Sheets decided that that was the best uh, base to go with. Um, mind you, technically we, they could have chosen any base they wanted to. Um, two or one half would have been useful for us. Um, in fact, it might be possible to figure out what, what uh, would be a function with a base of two that would that would fit that data. The problem is uh, it's called it's called regression for a reason, and that the expectation is that because this is data, these data don't necessarily conform to any function at all. What we're using is we're setting up an exponential function to to set up as a predictive model to be able to. Um, figure out what, say, the 2007 average weekly earnings could be, okay? Or the 2008 or 2001. You know, use the same, same mathematical model, the same equation, just substitute in a different year and what weekly earnings could be predicted uh, or could that formula predict. And that's what modeling does, really. It just predicts things that... Um, it, it's used to make predictions. Uh, the only warning is that you don't want to predict too far away from 2006. So you can't, the further you get away from a certain year, um, the more lousy the model is for a prediction. So usually these predictive models are only good for uh, years close to that. And then you'd have to rewrite the model again for uh, a future time. And it could be because that, uh, for example, economic policies change. Uh, but of course, you might be aware that in 2008 and 2009, there was a huge bank crisis. So would that have an effect on earnings? Quite likely, right? Because uh, for a while, there was a period of deflation. Prices were going down. Now, as, as you might understand, if uh, you've been watching the news in the past month, same thing is happening now. The prices are going down. Nobody's buying much beyond necessities, and um, and stores are stores are closed anyway. So there's a huge retail glut, um, and so prices are falling like a rock uh, on average. I mean, some prices are going up, you know, uh, but some prices are going down. Uh, most prices prices on average are going down. Definitely, you can see that in the price of gasoline. I mean. A 50 cent drop in the past month that's that's insane that's an insane price drop but that's what's happening 
So, um, you know, models would not be able to fit things like that in world events, you know. Uh, things that fall outside of the realm of mathematics are things like, you know, these events that happen, either a health event or a banking crisis or this crisis or, or that boom or that bust, you know. They, they usually cause us to have to rewrite the model uh, to predict future events as well. Uh, usually what we're saying, what we're saying using a model is that things in the future will be pretty much the same as things now. And that's usually the way humans think anyway, that things in the future, that if you're trying to plan ahead for the future, you're thinking that the conditions that kind of surround you at the moment are going to be the same conditions that will surround you in the future. That's usually the assumption everyone makes because they don't know any better, right? And what else would you plan with? Uh, unless you had a crystal ball or something. So um, I'm going to show you how to do a chart of year versus earnings as a scatter plot and then regress that scatter plot to a curve. Okay? So we're going to use uh, exponential regression to, to do this. Uh, since you don't have a graphing calculator on you, this would probably be the best way to do it. Um, I tried doing this using Desmos, as, as you can see here. Yeah, I got, I got those points for sure. But Desmos has no way of doing regression unless I actually came up with the function myself by hand. And as you can see here, this takes a lot of work as well as the knowledge of logarithms. Uh, well, the logarithms make it easier. But um, yeah, it takes, it takes a fair bit of work to come up with your own regression, keeping in the back of your mind that those points, because they come from the real world, you know, don't really, uh, they're going to be some random, random increases or decreases that will fall away from any curve that you try to make, right? You're going to have random, random fluctuations uh, on any given year. Uh, either toward your curve or away from your curve, either above your curve or below your curve. Uh, and that's a reality that uh, when you make a predictive model, that's a reality you have to live with. So simply, simply you, you can't 100% assume that all of these points fall on a function. You can't assume that, at least definitely not with data. So using, using that idea... I highlighted this table so I just drag my mouse on this table and I go to insert and I go to chart the default chart is pretty crappy so I go from line chart to this dotted one it's a scatter plot or they call it a scatter chart I guess and there's a couple of things wrong with it I don't like this y-axis and I tried to go mucking about trying to figure out how to change that y-axis so my easiest way to, of doing this is going Clicking on here and then um, going to, I believe, let's see, series, chart and axis titles. Not, well, I don't want the titles. I do want the axes though. The vertical axis I want to change. I, want to, I don't want it to go from zero. I want it to go from, say, 600 and stop at, say, what's what's the highest number that we can stop at? It says 747 over here, we can stop at 750. So we can go from 600 and we can end at 750 and notice that, uh, oh, sorry, oh, 750. I don't know why that disappeared. And there you go, oh, uh, what happened there? Why is that, why is that like that? Okay, that's what I had before, but that was blank, which is weird. Okay, um, I wasn't looking when I was typing, and uh, don't know why that's disappeared, but it looks like our our axes turned out to be what we wanted. And if I make that 750 for some reason, which is this number, which is the maximum value, it seems to behave all funny. 750, I'll try that again. It should work. Oh, I see allow bounds to hide data. Okay, anyway, as you can see here, um, this is definitely more of a curve. We could we could actually go from 650 to 750, actually, it looks like. 
and it's a little more now the curve is a little more pronounced notice that decompressing uh, the axes definitely makes a difference and definitely tells more of a story so now what we want to do is we want to um, put in that trend line uh, that we want to put in so I am going to click on a point doesn't matter which point it is and notice that there's a box right on the very bottom that says trend line that's what we want and the first thing they do is they put an actual real line there and that's not what you want you don't want a line you want an exponential curve and notice you know because of the nature of these numbers it doesn't appear to be much of a difference in the curve um, but it's a better correlation and if you and only a slightly better correlation so if we show the r squared here uh, it's actually 0.974 which is pretty freaking close as a correlation but um, uh, let's see we also wanted to show the oh hold on oh custom label trend line for earnings uh, what we wanted was to show oh yeah use equation so here's the here's the equation which is rather strange looking um, this time I'm a bit um, I'm going to be a bit more um, fussy about how I write things and how I write things using the software this time I'm going to um, oh, oh what's this okay um, let's just put this in and this goes into my oh, it goes the other way should have done this before the video hooked this up now um, the only problem is I don't like the plug on this it's very flaky but let's just test the mouse it works so let's go to Microsoft OneNote and the idea is uh, I wanted to show um, what on earth what in the heck is this equation um, I wanted to show you I know a lot of you kind of get confused at this you shouldn't really I don't I shouldn't expect you to get confused because you know rumor has it that your generation are digital natives and because you're probably used to spreadsheets and you're used to using technology all the time you should be able to know how computers represent numbers which I find I know is false I know half of you don't know some of you do but I know that when some of you even use a calculator um, if you see something with a funny e symbol or something like that um, you fail to recognize scientific notation when you see it but there's two e's going on here let's just write rewrite this number uh, just as we see it okay Three, oh dear that's not what I wanted don't want the highlighter 3.86 time uh, e to the negative 19 so this is what you're seeing e minus 19 so what the heck is that number 3.86 e minus 19 this is how scientific notation is represented on not just a spreadsheet but on most calculators uh, some calculators are nice enough to give you scientific notation as your teacher would write it so as your teacher would write it it would be 3.86 times 10 to the minus 19 so that's what that first part is and then you have e which you know to be approximately equal to 2.718 to eight blah 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 that's just a non-repeating decimal it just goes on forever like pi pi is a non-repeating decimal as well uh, otherwise known as an irrational number that's e and the other part is the exponent well it's just zero point two, oh zero point zero okay let's erase that zero point zero two to four x the r squared business 
the r squared we're saying is 0 0.974. This is a correlation. Um, actually, uh, for a curve, they call it the coefficient of determination. So the coefficient of determination is really a number from 0 to 1. And for 0 to 1, if an r squared is equal to 0, we say that's a poor correlation or no correlation. And for this one is a perfect correlation if it's exactly equal to 1. Okay? So a 1 is perfect, a 0 is no correlation at all, and certainly 0.974, I think we can all agree, is very, very, very close to 1, super close to 1. Okay, so that means that we are saying that, this, that the numbers generated by this, um, by this formula are a good model. So let's rewrite that function. Uh, if we call that f at x, and that's equal to 3.86 times 10 to the minus 19. Um, times e to the 0. Oh, 0. 0. I keep jumping to the 2 there. 0. 0.0224. And that's your function, okay? So what is that? This is your, I guess that's your stretch factor. And notice it's 10 to the minus 19. So it's a, it's an amazing stretch factor. It's, it's compressing like you wouldn't believe. It's, you know, that's a number so close to zero, it's not even funny, but it's not zero. So it causes a compression, a huge compression. And so that's, that's that bit. And the only other thing to consider is the point 0224, which in the last video we said was K. So we have two things which help us transform this function A and K. Now, if you use your fun if you used your calculator, this X is where you would put the year, right? It's where you would put the year, so 2002, 2003, 2004. And check for yourself if you can regenerate these numbers using your calculator, um, you know, just to, just to check to see, uh, to verify for yourself that, these, that this is the correct formula and this formula will generate. They won't generate the exact numbers, by the way. Remember, this is a regression equation, and so what it will do is estimate the numbers it'll predict, right? So notice that on the curve, notice that on the curve, here are the numbers we really have. They're numbers like this one, but here is the curve. The curve is not on the, the sorry, the point, uh, the data point is not on the curve. Here it is, here, and all the rest of them are not. There's only one, really only one point that really is on the curve or appears to be super close to the curve. All the rest of them are a certain distance, either above or below the curve. And that's important to notice, right? Um, so that means that if you, use this, if you use this function model, and if you work with the function model on your calculator, all you're getting really is not the real data point, but you're getting a prediction. And the only thing you can do is pray that you're close, right? Not that you're exactly bang on, but that you're close, okay? So the only thing that might, that could be bang on might be this point here, only because it looks like it's, it's so, it's so much on that curve, but we know uh, it might be just a tiny bit off. And it's hard to know, right? Given this, if you look at the scales here, like each, um, each of these grid lines is equal to 25, so you know, just a little bit of a shift might be a shift of two or three out of 25. That's, you know, it's fairly significant. So um, I'd be surprised to, if you could tell me that this model was an exact prediction of even one of the points, it might be, uh, it, it might be a little off. It might be off by as much as 10 or 20, um, but, you know, it shouldn't be way off, right? 
um, like 10 or 20 is even considered close when you compare that with 680, right? Um, so, you know, what we're referring to as close is a, a matter of definition, but that's what these function models are trying to predict, okay? Um, okay, so that's how you manage that pr uh, problem like that, where you're given some data points and my recommendation is, you know, obviously a, a graphing calculator is dandy, but um, most nearly the whole class is going to be using Desmos. As a matter of fact, you'll be using Desmos for my assignment because my assignment will have the data in Desmos and all your, your only job is to come up with a regression equation. Um, as you can see here, there's a lot of very detailed examples. Apparently, they do the same example again using Fathom. And um, they fall short of actually using a spreadsheet. But a spreadsheet actually works quite well. You can use Excel as well. Microsoft Excel uh, does the same thing. The menu, the menu choices are a little different. You have to go through different menus, different, uh, different things to point and click on. But it, it amounts to the same thing. Um, the next example has to do with depreciation. It's really the same thing. You're just modeling the points. This time the trend line is going to be for a decreasing function. And so, you know, just if you follow the same steps identically, it's not really a big deal. Um, the emphasis will be on this section. Uh, section uh, 3.5 wasn't really a wasn't really a huge deal but this section is a huge deal because I'd like to I'd like us to work from data um, for this chapter and um, and uh, I will ask you to go from uh, one one through nine there's a couple of data things there you might want to use Statistics Canada, but I, I'm not going to go as far as Statistics Canada, only because that's a whole other lesson. Um, I don't know if you are aware. You just go to StatCan, S-T-A-T-C-A-N dot C-A. Uh, there's a lot of very interesting data for you to work with. Um, the only thing is, uh, the data is not necessarily exponential data. Um, so that's something to think about. Um, at any rate, you can see StatsCan is taking a while to load. The site cannot be reached. I, I'm wondering if it's StatCan or StatsCan. Let's just use Stats. Let's see, let's see if that works. Um, Obviously, I should be uh, entering Statistics Canada and Google. It shouldn't take this long. So I'm just going to go to Google. Google.com and then Statistics Canada. Okay. And um, this is actually National Statistics Agency. Notice there's stuff on COVID-19. Obviously, uh, COVID-19 is actually a, a darling of mathematics because um, uh, the exponential growth curve followed the growth of COVID-19. It doesn't exactly follow an exponential curve, though. I think it, follow, it could follow more of a logistical curve because you've got to wait till the numbers level off. The numbers will level off. It never goes, it never goes uh, sky high because, of course, uh, the maximum number of infected people is equal to the population. And you can't go above that. You can't go higher than that. And that's in the worst case scenario. So, you know, that's assuming everyone gets COVID-19. And of course, we're, you know, we're, we're hoping and praying that not that that won't even be close to the number of people. So um, there's lots of data here. Um, you can actually, you know, go to data and uh, there's like, Whole bunch of stuff here i'm not gonna like i say i'm not gonna show you through this but at least i got you to the site um i'm i i might download something from here and um try it on you as an exponential problem um so uh that 
and, and of course when that happens you can actually load that data without having to type it in into Google uh, Sheets at least I sh you should be able to do that let's take a check so let's go here we go file yeah you can go open and you can actually like drag a file drag a file onto here um, and, and you do that by clicking on upload and uh, you can drag a file there so if, if I give you say a dot CSV file you can just drop drop it on here and Google Sheets should be able to recognize it and open it and uh, we'll just work from that okay um, and I guess that's it for for now um, like I said the homework is numbers 1 through 9 uh, if you want to play around with eStat on Statistics Canada you can do that while I'm trying to prepare an assignment for you uh, I'm hoping to have an assignment ready for you by the end of the day uh, I really do I'm hoping and praying to have one ready by the end of the day and uh, uh, I know that some people are getting impatient about my um, marking of now it, it's only been a week since the marking uh, since uh, you guys wrote uh, chapter 2 for me um, but I'm gonna try to have that marked over the weekend and uh, the only thing is the, the top priority right now is to get this assignment out all right um, so there you go um, and hope uh, hopefully uh, you and your uh, you and your loved ones and your family are doing okay during the crisis and uh, really hope to see you on Monday. Have a nice day.